Can you believe that I have done so many laptop reviews, but I haven't reviewed a Gigabyte Gaming laptop before? It's time to rectify that. Gigabyte reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review this, the G5 gaming laptop from Gigabyte. This one here is equipped with an RTX 4060. This one here has a 12th gen Intel i5. There are different configurations of this laptop. You can get a 4050, you can get a 460, you can get an i5, you can get an i7. You'll see in this video that it does perform very, very well in gaming tasks, despite the fact that this isn't a super, super expensive laptop. Okay, and here is the laptop. It's a review unit, so it's, uh, you know, some different reviewers have used it. Uh, so it's not going to be absolutely immaculate, obviously. Uh, looks pretty good, though. It's got some nice little uh, muted accents there. It's all black, kind of soft, very, very smooth textured. But it's like almost like it's etched in. It looks actually quite nice. And it's just a different color. So I actually do like that. It looks good. Not super thin. It's also not super thick. Bottom is a little bit more of a texture, which is good, less slippy. Nice big feet there to raise it up. They're actually going with the exposed heat sinks there, so you can see that it's got the exposed copper. Kind of like that. It looks cool. I don't know. It's kind of nice. Uh, you know, not super thick, not super thin. Definitely thicker laptops out there. I was actually assuming this would be slightly thicker and like kind of bulkier in the hand, uh, but it actually doesn't look that bulky or feel that bulky. So it's definitely a plastic chassis, right? But that's to keep the cost down. It also keeps the weight down too. It's actually not super heavy in the hand, and plastic does keep the weight down. But it's a firmer plastic, not like a cheap, not a, like not like a cheap feeling plastic. Okay, it doesn't feel very heavy actually. It doesn't really feel that heavy at all. Let's go like that there. So two thousand three hundred grams. That's four point five pounds basically. Yeah, something like that. Four point four pounds somewhere around there. So pretty good weight actually. It's not heavy. That's one of the advantages of you know having a plastic chassis, despite the fact that this is you know fifteen sixteen inch laptop. A lot of the times these guys can get up pretty heavy, especially when you got lots of cooling in there. They can get up, you know, five and a half, six pounds sometimes. So for moving it around, actually, it uh, feels pretty good. And there's no creak on it, right? I'm really giving it, actually. Probably shouldn't do that on a review unit, but it feels nice and structurally sound. And the power brick isn't actually huge either. It's not surprisingly small, all things considered. Yeah, 23, 2400 for everything. It's a little over five pounds, so that's actually pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. It's quite nice and light. Light charger and the laptop itself is pretty light, so that's good. Nice for people who are moving around, you know, students and that. You're not gonna have any issues with this laptop weight, I'd say. Uh, on the left side of the laptop here, we have our lock slot there. Fast USB-A, slower USB-A, microphone, headphone, speaker firing at an angle, which I actually do prefer that, to be honest. Right side, micro SD card, so I guess if you're a creator, if you do, uh, if you do uh, photography or something like that, that's actually really nice. USB-C on the right side there. Uh, you actually get an Ethernet port. Uh, and then let's see what's on the back. More ports there. USB-C, HDMI. Oh, and you get a micro uh, display. That's interesting. So you get two displays, but one of them is full size, one of them small. That's rare. I don't actually normally see that very often. And then you power in. All right, let's open it up. Lots of screws to get inside of it, but uh, they're all the same size and easy to get out. Uh, let's see how easy it is to actually open it up. I think I'm just going to be able to do this with basically a fingernail. One of the advantages of having a lot of screws is that it can, they can make it easier to get into. Very easy to get into, actually. Bottom is plastic. Uh, that's where your RAM is going to be. Just some structural stuff. And that's a look inside of the laptop. It actually looks quite good inside. Uh, you get down firing speakers, but they are actually angled out slightly. They aren't, you know, massive behemoth speakers. They'll probably sound okay. They're most likely not going to be shocking or anything like that. You get dual NVMe, so your first NVMe here is on the left. You get second NVMe slot over here, which would basically go down to there uh, if need be. So if you want to put in a second NVMe, you can, obviously. Wi-Fi is upgradable. Two RAM sticks. For some reason, there's two different RAMs in there. Again, some review reviewer probably mess that up to be honest because you know gigabytes kind of ship them with the same ram obviously uh especially because it says consign uh and that doesn't so yeah i guess the last person forgot their ram that's well good for me bad for a uh, person who forgot their ram so that sucks but uh battery is decent size 54 watt hours nothing abnormal there decent enough battery uh, it's got a little l shape on it so pretty standard uh the fans look pretty good here you get decent enough thickness on the fans themselves decent enough thin density there Good copper on it too, so you get two heat pipes on the left here, two heat pipes on the right here, and then you get some more just straight up copper exposed 
uh, to basically cover VRMs in that too. So it should cool pretty good. We'll see how noisy these fans are, but I'm assuming that they're going to move decent amount of air. Nothing abnormal about this internal and uh, you know, just pretty straightforward. It gets, gets the job done. Very nice. You can see here it looks good. Webcam up top there, microphone one of the two there. Uh, not massive bezels or anything, not micro bezels, but not massive either. A little bit of a chin, but again, not massive. Uh, looks good. Power over there. Normal size keyboard here, so you get a full size keyboard over here, and then you get a numpad. It actually looks like the numpad is only very slightly shrunk. And then there's the kind of nice design there, kind of a matte keycap cover there. Looks good, power up there. A little bit of that uh, robot design on the trackpad over here, which is nice. So the keyboard itself, you can see there, it's going to be a little bit of a fingerprinty keyboard. The black kind of matte texture. It's just the way that it is. If you don't want fingerprints on your laptop, don't get a black laptop. You know, get a silver laptop or a gray laptop or something like that. It's just the way that it is. They're just going to be bad for fingerprints. doesn't matter what brand. It is what it is. Pretty good key travel you can see here. The actual physical key caps are pretty large. Um, they're kind of like the cutout chiclet style. Good key, key travel. Right? Uh, not too gummy or anything like that. Snappy enough. They're not as snappy as, you know, like something, you know, super, super, super high-end. Uh, typing experience, but let's uh, you know the actual movement is good keyboard flex. There's no flex here. Really. It's a hard plastic material uh, There's a little bit on the keyboard if you really press like hard, uh, but I think typing I don't think there's gonna be much Yeah, no no keyboard flex when you're typing if you press on it obviously there's a little bit but other than that not really That's the keyboard control. Okay, so that function and that button there gave me a keyboard control red Oh red looks kind of nice Kind of like red on the black, that looks nice. Let's see what else there's, orange, yellow, green. It looks all right. That uh, teal color, that's kind of nice too. Blue, Pur that's, I would probably use purple myself. Pink is nice too, actually. You know, I'm used to keyboards that I spent $3,000 on and pick it specifically because the keyboard's super snappy to type up essays, but it's totally fine. I mean, for gaming, it's going to be nice and snappy, perfect, uh, really, really good for gaming. We'll do some like keyboard style gaming. It would take me like probably, you know, 20 minutes or something to get used to it, uh, but it feels fine. It's not as snappy as, you know, like a high-end ThinkPad or something like that, uh, or, you know, like a Gigabyte Arrow also has a really nice keyboard. Uh, it's supposed to be though. It's like a creator laptop. So people are typing on them all day, but for you know general use It's gonna be fine gaming purposes is fine uh, Trackpad feels nice and smooth actually because this is a smooth texture and this is actually a really smooth texture So it's not a glass trackpad by any means uh, But it is actually really nice because it's got that smooth texture to it that you can't feel those designs there And uh, yeah, it actually is a really nice feeling trackpad to be honest. Uh, let's see the click nice sharp click It's actually a really nice trackpad, actually. I mean, glass trackpad is going to be better, again, but for a gaming laptop, it's actually really good, to be honest. Okay, let's have a look at this uh, Gigabyte software here. So you get Command Center. I just hit Function and that button there with the, back, with the forward slash, and it brought it up. Uh, so you get your keyboard, backlight control in here, uh, and then we can come in here. The performance mode. Entertainment is just going to be probably, like, mixed. Yeah, balance mode. So entertainment mode, I guess, is balance mode for a lot of brands called balance mode. Performance will be like go ham mode when you're gaming, we'll do that. See how it is, power saving. Well, it actually is it going up. Power saving if you're, oh, it actually shuts down your NVIDIA GPU while you're doing it, that's interesting. Cool, we'll do that after. And then there's also quiet mode as well, which I guess is probably, I don't know, let's see what it says. So that doesn't kill your GPU. So power saving actually kills the uh, NVIDIA GPU. So Blue light filter, oh cool, you can, oh, it goes weird with that weird blue, but you can kill that off, brightness, volume, uh, you can turn it up and down, whatever, maximum, fan speed, automatic, well, okay, sure, I mean, just leave it on automatic, let it do its own thing, that's cool, we'll go through these modes a little bit later when we're doing gaming tasks, and you'll set a bench in that. Macros, you can, oh cool, you can set up macros in here, that's neat, that was a pretty cool software actually. I'm not a macro kind of guy, but if you play macros, pretty sweet. Uh, and then battery saver type stuff. So this is good software, nice and clean actually. There's no like weird bloat in here. It's just nice and straightforward. I'm pretty happy with this software here. Okay, we'll start with our audio test here. Probably not max, we'll start at about 50. So if you have headphones, you might wanna adjust. Okay, I'll start turning it up now. 
to 100% max. Okay, so that's the speaker test. Uh, that's the weakest part of this laptop, I'm guessing. Uh, the speakers, they're okay. They're not tinny. They don't rattle, uh, but there's not a lot of like bass or like depth to them or warmth or anything like that. They're fine. I mean, you're going to be doing meetings, watching YouTube, that kind of stuff. They're not going to bother you. Uh, but, you know, if you're watching, like if you're doing like serious gaming or something like that, uh, serious movie watching, you, they're not fantastic. They're certainly get loud. So even if the fans get loud on this laptop, uh, the, lap, the speakers will cut through the volume of the fans for sure. It gets very loud, like it's above 80 dB, uh, but it's not like super rich. Again, it's not, this is not a, like a creator laptop and it's also not like a super halo gaming laptop. So that, that was exactly as I expected. Usually these type of laptops in this kind of price range, uh, the speakers are going to be your, your primary actual weakness of them. It's pretty. Uh, let's look at the screen here. I like this wallpaper, by the way. It looks pretty cool. Uh, screen's bright enough. Again, it's not a... 1400 nit screen uh, but i have a really bright light over top of me right now and it looks fine it's actually relatively bright uh 1080p there uh, refresh rate 144 hertz so fine okay so we'll do the color test here uh reds are going to be the weak spot on a non high color range so like 100 percent dcip screen uh normally the reds are really vibrant and the other colors look okay and then as you go down from that you know the color space gets squished a little bit usually the reds suffer uh this is fine pretty standard for a gaming laptop from what I'm seeing here, but let's go through. It's not bad. It's not certainly not a creator laptop, but it doesn't look bad, I'd say. Yeah, the blacks look really good, actually. Nice and uniform on that. Um, pretty good, actually. The reds aren't super, like, hyper-vibrant, but the blacks look good. I get no IPS bleed at all, actually, on that screen. So it's a good screen. It just doesn't have a huge color space, is basically what I'm seeing here. Uh, you know, the blues look vibrant. Uh, yellows look good. That looks good. Let's go to another video. This is one with more green in it. Yeah, so I mean, this is going to be way above something like, you know, you know those like cheap business laptops? Uh, lots of brands, like all companies make them. All OEMs have these like cheap business laptops. Uh, this is vastly above that, um, but it's not going to beat out, you know, a creator style laptop. So I don't want to be biased because I use creator style laptops all the time with like you know, $4,000 price tags and mini LED screens and things like that. This is not that. But for gaming, this is actually fine. This is nice. 1080p, crisp, bright, good color space. Um, not oversaturated. It pretty much looks neutral to me. So blues look good. Blues, blues look really vibrant, actually. Okay, this is the like max performance mode. Uh, just want to check the noise here, and then we'll switch to the other mode. See if it makes a difference. So 58, certainly audible. They're actually not that bad. There's, they're not pitchy or anything like that. I don't know. I feel like uh, laptop fans are just getting better these days. I don't think it's making a difference. Let's try uh, quiet. That makes a difference. Wow, okay, that's a huge drop. Uh, I'll check the actual scores, and when we get to the benchmark, we'll see what the difference in scores is. Yeah, quiet mode is much quieter. The fans are still going, but, I mean, we're running Cinebench. It's Here's a look at some sentiment scores. We can see here that in performance mode, we're getting a pretty good score on this i5 12th gen, 12,455. Very respectable. We drop down to the balance mode. We do lose a little bit of performance there, about 20 or so percent. We're going down to about 10,700. Uh, when we drop down to quiet mode, we do lose a fair bit of performance here, but we are dropping down to about 4,000. You can still do a lot with 4,000. You can see here it's actually matching an 11th gen i7 uh, on a mobile platform. So, I mean, you can definitely still do desktop tasks in quiet mode. But if you need the performance, you're definitely going to want to be in one of the other two modes. The SSD included, you can see here, is good. Gen 4 speeds, really good reads, decent enough writes, nothing special on the writes, but overall it's going to perform very well. And you can see here the Wi-Fi is very fast, over 500 megabytes a second. Downloads, almost 500 on the upload, so very good. Battery life is okay. I mean, it doesn't have a huge battery, so all things considered, it's actually respectable. You can see here that when we're looking at just kind of idle, hanging out here, is doing some general word processing type stuff. We're getting about six hours or so battery life, if you look here in the bottom right. It's actually not too bad for an Intel processor, and considering the battery is not gigantic. Then you can see here we're watching some 1080p YouTube, and we're getting uh, around three hours or so. So if you're just going to hang out and watch some YouTube uh, at 100% brightness, you'll get around that much. You'll get around... Uh, three hours or so. Interestingly, the uh, 
refresh rate was locked to one max refresh rate. So I think that uh, if you can get that down to 60 hertz, you'll actually get even better battery life. Here's a look at the webcam. It's a little bit further back, a little bit closer. Uh, it's not bad. I mean, I actually have really bad lighting in here. I have a little bit of light on the right here, uh, very little bit on the left, almost nothing over there. It's doing a pretty good job. We'll see how the audio is, but uh, the actual webcam looks like it's doing a decent job, all things considered. Uh, I'm in my office and pretty dim and late at night, so uh, it's doing a pretty good job, I'd say. Okay, here we are in Baldur's Gate 3, 1080p native ultra. It's the most demanding area in the game, very, very demanding area, but we have a pretty good CPU here and 4060 is just really not gonna struggle at 1080p unless you play some like hyper demanding game with ray tracing and all that, you'll be good to go. Screen looks good for the game. I mean, again, not creator level, so you're not gonna have like the most vibrant OLED colors, but it looks good. I'm recording this externally because I want you guys to see what I'm seeing. This is a gaming laptop, so you're, I mean, you can hook it up to an external screen, but I think a lot of people will be playing off of the laptop. And good performance here, 71 average, 35 for the 0.0% lows, that's quite good, even moving around. This game is notoriously hard to run even though people kind of don't know that sometimes. GPU, we're up at 75 watts. Uh, so you are not dumping you know, 100 watts into the 4060, but I need you guys to understand that the 4060 scales very well at low watts. You, if you watch some of my like silent mode gaming tests on a 4060, you can, if you go from 100 watts down to about 75, you will see a little bit of performance drop, maybe 5%, maybe 10 max. And below that, not really. So, I mean, 75 watts is giving you a good amount of the chunk of performance. Uh, putting up to 100 will give you a little bit more. Beyond 100 doesn't really do anything. So, uh, like, actually, like legitimately won't really add much performance. So, 75 is actually usually where I game. Sometimes a little higher um, if the game is really demanding. But I usually game at about 75 watts. Sometimes even lower. But I want to see what this other uh, performance mode does. Right now, we're on, like, max performance. Let's go to entertainment, which is a little bit quieter. I just want to see what it does for performance. So we'll switch to that mode there, and then we'll come back to the game and see what happens. So a little bit less wattage to the GPU. You can see that now we're down to 60 or so, just a few watts less. And notice how the performance is uh, like legitimately the same. Right, We dropped off 10, 15 watts, and the performance is the same. CPU is still pretty high. This game demands a lot of CPU. Here's a brand new game for 2024, Horizon Forbidden West. We're at uh, 1080p native, and we are at high. We're on that performance mode. Yeah, and there's, I mean, it's just giving you 60, basically. So <laughs> you don't really need to mess around with much here. Just play it at 60, I guess. Looks good on the screen, too. Nice big screen. Nice and bright. Uh, I just want to see what happens if we do throw in a little bit of scaling, just like the lightest DLSS, for example. I don't know. We'll just try quality. It'll probably give us a pretty big jump. Yeah, huge jump. I typically consider quality DLSS like free because it doesn't affect the visual fidelity, and sometimes it actually makes it better. And uh, there's another 20 FPS. I'd probably just throw on DLSS. Why not? You don't have to. Play is totally fine without it, but let's just throw it on. Okay, so now we're on quiet mode here. Listen to how much quieter that is. Because this game isn't super CPU intensive. It it does use CPU, but it's not nearly as intensive as Baldur's Gate on CPU. This one's more GPU intensive. And the 4060 doesn't really care. The 4060 is totally fine with getting its watts cut. Like it just doesn't care. It's like it doesn't it's not affected by that. Um, and yeah, we did lose, you know, 20 FPS or whatever, but the laptop is almost silent now. The microphone might exaggerate it, but I can't really hear the, yeah, I don't think I can hear them. Yeah, I can't hear the, uh, fans at all, at least not over the, like, background noise of the game. Okay, and here's some Resident Evil 4. We're actually on prioritized graphics, which is quality FSR, just the lightest. Obviously, and we're on that quiet mode. So again, my ceiling vent is louder than this now. 
Uh, so you can see here, I mean, on silent mode, this is another pretty GPU intensive game. The CPU is only pulling 15 watts, so it's like being starved technically. Okay, so here we are, you know, if you just let it go, performance mode, you don't really care about the noise because you wear headphones or whatever you play on a screen, you're going to get crazy high FPS here. This game is like, you can, you can easily play this game at 60, you'll be totally fine at 60, because it's a slower pace game, so 90 is very high, realistically, so, yeah. The laptop, I mean, if you don't mind the noise, and you let it go at, you know, max setting, it will really tear through a lot of games. It's going to give you great performance. The actual, the actual keyboard deck here has no heat at all. Uh, there's like, yeah, like even that, that's not even, that's not even warm, right? So it is easily able to evacuate the heat out of the laptop, even if we are, you know, basically playing games on max. That's why you can hear the fan. It's going on absolute max right now. Uh, the keyboard is super cool. There's no heat on it at all. So what do I think about the Gigabyte G5 here? Well, it's actually quite nice. Uh, it's a budget laptop, right? So I'm not going to be evaluating this compared to some $3,000 mini LED behemoth with, you know, 4K screen and Pantone validated and a 4090 in it. That's not what this is here, right? You have to be realistic. This is a laptop that is not super expensive and is not meant to be super expensive. We have a kind of a messed up economy going on right now around the world. Things are expensive and hard to afford. I am not a wealthy man by any means, so I appreciate a laptop that doesn't cost an absolute fortune but gives you good performance. The 4060 in here performs very, very well. It's not 150 watt, 140 watt, 4060. That's a good thing, in my opinion, because 140 watts is pointless on a 4060. Above 100, 100 watts in general is pointless, realistically. That's the cap for 4060. I don't even use my 4060s any time I use them at that anyways. I use them about 75 watts. I find that's the perfect balance of you know noise, temperature, and also performance. This one here sits at about 75, 80 watts. It runs fantastic. It's only 12th gen, so you may look at that and say, well, it's you know, a little bit of an older CPU, doesn't matter. Most of these games you're gonna be playing are gonna be GPU bound anyways. Uh, you know, Even at this resolution here, the 12, the 12500 in this machine here is performing very well, actually. I had no issues with the CPU in the system whatsoever. Uh, this model has been refreshed as well, and it actually comes with you know 13th gen now. You get a bit more power out of it if the CPU really matters. This specific model here, though, the CPU performs well. The GPU performs very, very well. The actual chassis here does not feel cheap. It's definitely, I mean, not metal. It's a plastic to keep the budget, keep the cost down a little bit. So we're going to go with plastic here, but it's not a cheap plastic by any means. I've used cheap plastic laptops, and believe me, if it was a cheap plastic laptop, I would say it's a cheap plastic laptop. Uh, this is not. It's premium feeling plastic, right? Like it's firm. It's, uh, you know, like the hinges feel nice there, nice and smooth, gives you that confidence. Uh, it doesn't have like weird flex on it or anything like that, right? Like the bottom actually feels really sturdy too. That's like a certain type of reinforced plastic on the bottom. Uh, the lid here, probably covering fingerprints because I've been messing with it all day. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of a nice, smooth feeling there. So that's good. The chassis feels really nice. Uh, the only negative really for the laptop, the only real negative for me as a like person is it doesn't have great speakers. That's really it. Uh, so, I mean, if you really care about like some booming monstrous speakers, I mean, I don't know, get like a MacBook or something, or I don't know, get a much more expensive laptop with huge monster speakers in here. That's the only part where I see it's a bit lacking is the speakers. But again, budget laptop. What do you expect? You're not expecting to have some crazy audio quality here. I think most people on a gaming laptop like this, they're just gonna throw in <laughs> headphones, honestly, just plug in some headphones and away you go, right? Any other negative, Negative isn't actually negative. It's just if you want more laptop, you spend more money. If you want a 480, you go buy a 480. You pay twice as much money. That's like that's how these things work. Uh, but for the price of the laptop, I think it's actually pretty good. So this is a pretty good laptop. It's all going to come down to pricing. I mean, if you need a laptop that doesn't cost a fortune, but you want to buy another 4060, and there's a big jump between a 4050 and a 4060, uh, you know, and last gen stuff as well. It's very efficient. If you want to buy in and you want to get into that 4060. Uh, the Gigabyte G5 here is a good option for you as well. Happy with it.